Uh, in the past, you both boasted of your ability to form productive working relationships with your Republican colleagues. But in this era of harsh partisanship, uh, former Vice President Biden has drawn fire from within the Democratic Party for suggesting that if President Trump is defeated, Republicans in Congress will have, quote, an epiphany and return to the bygone days of working with Democrats in a bipartisan manner, a move he says he'll welcome. His critics call that naive and out of touch with reality. Who's right, Biden or his critics? One moment, one minute, please. Well, we hope that when Donald Trump is fumigated out of the White House in November and Republicans lose control of the Senate and they're in the minority, that they will see the light uh, and they will begin to cooperate on a bipartisan basis. That's what we hope. But if they don't, there's a big agenda next year on health care on the economy, on education, on criminal justice. Justice, 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 justice. It's on the ballot in November, and it will be the agenda next January. And if the Republicans continue to be obstinate and obdurate, then we'll just have to change the filibuster rules in order to get that agenda passed. Because America can't wait. Justice must be delivered, especially to those essential workers in our country who right now are running the risk of catching the coronavirus and giving it to their own family. We can see who they are. They're poor, they're black, they're brown, they're immigrants, and we need to ensure that we put an agenda on the books that the Republicans, if they block it, cannot stop because we just change the rules. Thank you, Congressman Kennedy. A return to bipartisanship is that naive and out of touch. One well, minute. Uh, I, I hope not, but I fear so. And that's why, John, uh, I would point you to the way in which I've gone about my job over the course of the past four terms in Congress, the majority of those under Republican control. The bills that I referenced a moment ago all passed with, under Republican uh, control of the House. But I was able to find areas of overlap and to push those, that legislation through. The difference between myself and Senator Markey is that I'm not content just to say that that is going to be enough. He talks about a big, bold agenda. We need to have a big, bold agenda. The difference is he'll vote for it. I'll fight for it. That big, bold agenda doesn't just come about because we wish it to be so. You've got to go out there and make it so. You've got to be here in, on our streets in communities like Chelsea and Fall River and Brockton and Springfield, listening to the concerns uh, of, our, of our constituents. You've got to take that fight nationally. He likes to cite the support that he's gotten in his uh, similar bills with Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders. The difference is they are in every corner of the country fighting for that change, and he has gone nowhere to make it come to that pass. Re rebuttal. Well, I introduced the Green New Deal with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a year and a half ago, so we would have real environmental justice in our country as we solved the, um, the, uh, the problem of climate change for the planet, that we would save all the creation by engaging in massive job creation. But Alexandria and I, we made sure in the Green New Deal, which was criticized, by the way, not just by Republicans and Fox News, but it was criticized by many Democrats as well, just going too far. Because we, we talked about intersectionality. We talked about frontline communities. We talked about people of color. We talked about uh, how those who are in the most of polluted situations invariably are the ports, they're the immigrant families, and we could see that during the coronavirus. So when I introduced that bill, yeah, it was poo-pooed in certain circumstances, but it seems prescient today. And by the way, the same thing is true about Medicare for All. When I stood next to Bernie in 2017, introducing Medicare for All, Congressman Kennedy took two years uh, to sign on to Medicare for All. That now looks like predictive of where we are right now. Millions of people have lost their health care. We're 47th in the world in life expectancy. We're 38th in health outcomes. Last year, two-thirds of all bankruptcies were because of health care bills. Medicare for all now looks like it's a bill that has, a, has its time that has arrived the same as uh, the Green New Deal. That is the leadership that I provide building movements across our country so that we can have the fundamental change which our country Re wants and needs. Response. Senator. It took you 40 years in office to show leadership on Medicare for All. 40 years. So let's get that record straight first. Second, the facts belie what you say because those movements aren't built in Washington. You are not here. You're here less than a week a month, or a week a month. but you're not out there campaigning to drive that change. Bernie Sanders is out there building a movement, whether that's on racial justice or social justice or economics, and agree or disagree with it, which, by the way, you endorsed Hillary Clinton twice. 
You'd never endorse Senator Sanders in his run for the presidency. Never. So the idea that you are somehow leading that same movement that you now claim to try to, to, to hold just is not the case because you're not here on our, in our communities and you're not out there in, our, in our, every corner of our country galvanizing those forces to actually bring this to pass because as your own campaign has said, when Democrats were desperate for that change, when Republicans had the House and the Senate and presidency, I traveled to dozens of districts to bring about, uh, to win the House and hold this administration accountable and pass progressive change. And you, Senator, went nowhere. Nowhere. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Look, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and I, in introducing the Green New Deal, has created a movement of millions of young people across this country. The Sunrise Movement. They're on every campus, high school, middle school in our country right now. Young people rising up, demanding that we solve that problem. It's at the grassroots in our country. It's changed the whole debate in the way in which people view this issue. Uh, President Biden has now asked Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, to advise him on climate change. And in fact, President Biden now says that the Green New Deal is the framework for the climate change legislation that we will pass next year. That is a movement that came from the grassroots of our country. That is a movement which I built with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It's why the Sunrise Movement is with me, the Sierra Club is with me, the League of Conservation Voters is with me, which the National Resources Defense Council is with me, because I built a movement that is going to change our country and our planet next year with wind and solar, all electric vehicles, plug-in uh, uh, plug batteries with an energy efficiency strategy that is going to create millions of jobs in our country and do so with justice. Not just jobs, but justice for every family, especially families of color. I want to move on, but go ahead. You, he began, so you can finish. 47 years. And then now we have this. And, Senator, if that's, if that's the movement that we're building, then why not go out and fight for it? Why not go out there and actually build it? Because your, your own campaign says that you've been here. And you haven't been out there building it. You've been, and you weren't in Washington. You missed those votes for, for months on end. So... If that's, if that's where the fight is, then why aren't you fighting for it? And that's, that is the difference, folks. You support it. I support the Green New Deal. I was on it from day one. The difference is that I will fight for this. I am 39 years old. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. I'm... You, we need environmental justice in our country. The difference is that I know that that's not just, not just going to come to pass. Those fossil fuel interests that you talk about, they'll put up a fight for every last obstruction that they can. But you're the guy that took a donation from the chairman of ExxonMobil, or board member from ExxonMobil during this campaign, not me. If we're going to actually do this, we need to bring that fight to every corner of our country. And you haven't. All right, you Look at right, 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 right now, right now, right now, there is a super PAC run by the congressman's twin brother that are running negative ads against me on television all day long, every single day. And there are media reports that his father, his father, may be providing funding for that super PAC. And again, that funding could be coming from some of the fossil fuel money that his father raised as a congressman because he's using that money right now to attack me. So my question is, if he wants to go to this issue, my question is this, is your father funding that super PAC that is attacking me right now. No clue, no idea. And Senator, let's be very clear about this. The only reason why there is a super PAC in this race, the only one, is because you would not stay good to your word. You signed a pledge back in 2013 to keep super PACs out. Shannon Liz Reardon and I gave you that, came to you to ask you to do the same thing. She and I signed that pledge. You refused to. You have had, there's been negative ads on me, digital ads put forward by your campaign for a long time. You, your campaign, your super PAC, is funded by a telecom billionaire, a private equity billionaire, and one of the folks that funded Mitt Romney's super PAC when he ran for president. You have taken more money from the telecom industry than any living member of Congress. So if we want to talk about campaign finance reform, I asked you multiple times to keep this money out. You said no. Here's the difference. Here's the, John, here's the, oh, here's the difference. Wrap it up. Here, well, no, this is an important subject, John. Here's the difference. The difference is this. This, this um, super PAC is running relentless negative ads. I challenged the congressman 
to say that if any super PAC gets in, that it only be positive and that it be disclosed money. And so right now, what the congressman is saying is, with all these relentless ads coming in, he says, I have no idea if my father, he's saying, I have no idea if my father is providing the funding for all of these negative ads that are being run, because they should be positive. Any super PAC for me should be positive, any super PAC for him. So here's what I would say to the congressman. I'm sure your father's watching right now. Tell your father right now that you don't want money to go into a super PAC that runs negative ads. And Just tell your twin brother and tell your father you don't want any money to be spent on negative ads in Massachusetts I've in 2020 in the era of Donald Trump. Senator, I respond. I've said that multiple times. Have you told your father that? I've said that publicly multiple times. Have you times. said it to your father? I, you publicly. Have you said it to your father? Publicly, Senator. Tell your father Senator, you don't want the money I've to be spent it. on negative ads. Senator. Do you want it? Do you, Senator. Will let you make that point? Let him answer. Senator. Okay, sure. When I asked you back in February at a debate whether you would stand by your word and you said there needed to be positive voices, hold on, you said there needed to be positive voices, you know what those, when you didn't have an answer for who was to judge those positive voices? It's because of those workers like Miles Calvey and the IBEW, the folks that ended up losing their jobs because okay. of your bill and you wouldn't meet with them. They have a very different take on some of your positive voices of because of the economic devastation that it brought for those families. Okay. okay. I, the, the, look at the, the viewers want to hear John, some other look at, issues. Look at, look at, look at, my, my campaign Ten seconds, is... seconds, please. My campaign is people-powered. Congressman Kennedy's campaign against me is now fossil-fueled. And all okay. I want him to do is tell his father... I've to stop spending times. money on negative commercials okay. in Massachusetts in the era of Trump. We should all You've be positive with a vision, a big vision, for where this country is going. Instead, the congressman is running a relentlessly negative campaign, which I do not think is good for Massachusetts, and he should tell his brother, so, his twin brother, and ten, his father to stop ten it. Ten seconds. That, uh, Senator, if we're going to... Your campaign supporters have put out tweets and... Uh, have, have bullied my supporters, have put out tweets saying that Lee Harvey got the wrong Kennedy, that where is Lee Harvey Oswald? And not a word coming from you, not a word. So cut the negative complaining. Look at if that's, no that's one, no, look, not a word from you or your campaign. No, I obviously would never at any time uh, accept anyone saying that about your family. And no one affiliated with my campaign would ever say anything like that. They and did. so I, 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 say, I, I say to you, okay, that that is just something which is completely unacceptable. It should not be in politics, and I make that a pledge to you. It is absolutely wrong.